Okay guys, so today I wanted to start a series of videos where I talk about horses in the news. Now I'm not a big news fan, but as soon as I see horses in the news, I get a little interested. Uh, there are certain things that will pique my interest with the news, but most of it I'm just like, eh, I don't care, don't really care. I'm not one of the people that like watching the news, I only do when I have to. Um, but so back in like April or May, I don't remember exactly when it was, it was sometime when I was staying with my dad. There was a news story that talked about um, the New York carriage rides in Central Park. And if you aren't in the United States or you just don't know what the New York carriage rides are, pretty much what it is is um, New York has horse-drawn carriages that tour around Central Park mostly. Um, which I, no, I think all of them do. Yeah, all of them do. Um, and right now, the mayor, whose name is Bill de Blasio, I think, I don't know. Some New York person, let me know if that's actually how you say it. I think that's how the newscaster said it. Uh, I'm very bad with names, so bad. You're gonna find that out when I start talking about people who uh, are in the articles who they got uh, verbal confirmation from. Um, but so I had another news story that I want to talk about, but I'm not going to do that in this video mainly because I didn't do the research yet on it because I get so angry with this one. Um, and also they're totally different stories, so I'm not going to merge them together. Uh, also there's a lot of information here. In about an hour I got almost three pages of information and that was before I went, I can't even do this anymore because I'm too angry because I get very passionate about stuff like this. Uh, the mayor is working on getting the horses banned from New York City. Now, when he first got elected, he said that within that first week, he was going to ban the horses from New York City. Um, like, And it, the process is still going. He says that it probably will be done by the end of the year, which we're getting pretty close to the end of the year. So you've got like three months, right? Yeah, because it's September now. I keep thinking it's August. Uh, but he's got like three months to fulfill that promise. Uh, and some people are really angry about this. Like, they don't want the horses to go away. Um, which I'm all for banning the carriage rides. I mean, yes, is it nice to do a little carriage ride in the parks? Sure, but when the horses aren't well taken care of, I don't think that human entertainment should be sacrificed for an animal's, like, their... What, am I trying, what word am I trying to think of? Quality of life. There we go. I don't think that those should be, well, if people are enjoying their time, the horse's quality of life can just, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't think that that's right. Um, so there are about 200 plus horses that are used for carriage rides in New York City. Um, also if I'm looking down, I'm reading my notes to refresh my memory. Because uh, like I said, this was like an hour ago, and I, there's so much going on in my brain right now that I'm just like, oh, so much, so much. Um, but so a lot of them are believed to come from Amish farms or trotter racing tracks, which if you don't know what a trotter racing track is, it's where you take a standard bred horse. So you hook them up to a tiny little cart where they have to race at a trot. So it's a very extended, long trot. And if they just, if they break the trot, they're disqualified. You don't win, no matter if you came in first because it, the whole point of the race is to make them trot the entire time. That's where they believe most of them come from. Um, and these horses are considered as breakdown horses um, in the industry that they were in previously before the carriages. Um, oh, and if you didn't know, standard bred horses, when they're trained to do the trot racing, they are hooked up to the back of a pickup truck and that pickup truck will accelerate to the horse, like the maximum speed that they want, uh, so that the horse has is forced to run faster or to move faster, which then the carriage rider people say, "Oh, that horse is now street savvy." Just because you got pulled behind a truck does not make you street savvy. And then this vet lady says, "Her." her her name is Holly Shever. Shever? I don't know how to say it properly. She says that many of them actually come into the carriage business 
with a legacy of, of leg issues. So joint problems, probably tendonitis. There might even be a little bit of um, navicular, like what Waco has. Um, so they have all these joint and hoof problems and they're still allowed to pull carts, which I personally don't think it should be allowed. Oh, and the horses are allowed to work until they turn 26, which fun fact, if you didn't know, most shire breeds or draft breeds can only live to like their average age that they live to is 25. So that's a year after their final year. Um, and then later on in the article it said that once they get onto the like start pulling the cart, it takes off half of their lifespan. So that 25 year lifespan approximately is now 12 to 13 years. So they're never going to make it to that 26 age limit. Uh, personally, the way that I see it is if you have a horse that you're doing a lot of exercise with, once they hit 20, it's time for them to slow down. They don't really need to be that excitable and running through barrels, jumping, racing, any of that. Because they're 20, they're getting older, their joints are starting to get bad, they could start developing things like ring bone in the hoof or different um, joint issues, tendon issues, like Mallory. Don't want to do very much with her because she's 26 year, or 28 years old. old. Cat was 26. Um, so those horses need to start slowing down at 20. Oh, and of course, I'm sure you all have heard, these horses are worked nonstop, and kind of they are. They're worked about nine to 10 hours a day which most human beings barely, like, they'll work eight hours a week, or eight hours a day, my bad, five days a week. These horses are worked nine to 10 hours a week, or nine to 10 hours a day, why would I keep saying a week? Seven days a week. So that's 70 hours, if we're gonna, just because I'm rounding up to 10, it makes it easier. Um, see if I can do the math in my head. 54, no wait, no, that's six. 63 hours a day if it's nine. Had to think about math there for a minute. Can you tell it's not my strong suit? Um, so that's, that's a lot of hours to be working. So then the article moved on to tag and started explaining how things work. So a lot of the bridles are tightened to the point where they start digging into the face because what they want is that when they pull on the bit that the horse responds even quicker. And that if they start jerking their head around they can correct them or if they start veering off track, it's a very easy correction, which I'm, I like having my bridle pretty loose. Um, I mean, I keep the, the cheek pieces in the correct spot so that the hackamore sits on her nose properly and whatnot. And if I had a bit in her mouth, I didn't want the bit like touching her front teeth, which not into bits, if we've discussed this yet, I don't know. Um, but so, there was actually a picture on the website, which if I can get my edit, if I figure out how to work my editing software, software, can talk. <laughs> I will try to like put in pictures as I'm talking about things so that you can see some visuals. Um, but there was a horse that had like discoloration scars on his cheeks and on his nose from the nose band and the cheek piece. Also, they have a chain that goes, they have two sets of reins. I know this because I, it was in so many of the videos. So one goes straight to the bit and the other one comes up through their bridle and hooks onto this little ring that's probably about in this general area if you were to go proportional to a horse. Um, and what that does is when they pull back on both, the bit is pulled down like at the angle that a bit normally gets pulled and that's also pulled up so it makes more of a gagging motion which is not a nice thing to do. Not a fan. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, and the carriages weigh anywhere between 12 and 1,800 pounds, which is the average weight of a normal horse. Like, draft horses, obviously, they can get to about 2,000 pounds. Um, but if you have a horse that's 1,200 pounds, they're pulling their own weight in the smallest cart. Not to mention the tourists that then get put onto these carts, which... I'm going to say it how it is. But when you get fat tourists in there, 
that's a pain to pull. And I know horses can pull a lot more than their body weight, but it's not a very good thing for them to do for 10 hours a day. I mean, even if you have light people in the car, it's, have you ever tried pulling someone or something that is the same weight that you are? It's freaking hard. Like, pulling a cart that has, what, like, a hundred and however many pounds you are, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. It's kind of annoying. It was an ROTC thing that we did, just if any of you are wondering how I know this. Oh, air pollution in New York City is really bad. They're fifth. Yeah, they rank fifth out of the top ten most traffic, like cities with the most traffic. And 6% of all of their deaths are due to air pollution. So not only does that is that bad for humans, but that's also really bad for horses. And those horses are forced to be in that all day long. Like humans, if you're walking around New York City, because a lot of people walk, you can choose to get inside somewhere. Like you can choose, I'm gonna walk down to this place, it'll take me about 10 minutes or however long it takes you to get wherever you're going, and then I can go inside. The horses don't have that luxury. They're in there for 10 hours, which you could say that the same is true for the people who drive the cart, but they chose that job. The horse didn't say, hmm, I want to be a carriage horse in New York City. No. Uh, There's also a study done in 1985 about how gas affects horses' lungs, which if I can find it, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it again, but if I can, I will link it down below along with all my other resources in the videos that I saw. Uh, oh, and the article also talked about how hard ground hurts, like it's really bad for horses' joints, which, yes, that's true. I read another article back when I first saw this um, thing come on my local news, and it was like, what lies everyone's saying about carriage horses and it like started talking about how the stablings aren't as bad as everyone says you know this this that and the other like 10 things that everyone lies about with carriage horses and one of them was that the horses wear special shoes that make it so that walking on the pavement isn't as harsh as it is for regular horseshoes also horses that walk on hard ground it's better for them than walking on soft ground that's a load of bs any horse person, anyone that has any knowledge on horses knows that a nice soft arena with nice soft plushy dirt that has give to it is way better than riding around in an arena that's rock hard. You don't have to be an idiot to figure that out. That's like saying, oh, you know, I prefer walking on concrete barefoot than I do in sand. Also, if you don't know what twat means, it's not the American way of, like, what that is. It's a British slang word that means idiot, pretty much. Um, so if you ever hear me say twat, that's what I'm saying, not... It's a long A, not a short A. Um... Oh, in 2013, there was a cart driver who was arrested and charged with animal cruelty because his horse was, he was having some foot issues and he was limping. So the police ended up arresting him, which is, was an isolated incident because most of the time NYPD does not enforce the horse cruelty or the animal cruelty laws for the horse carriages. They just kind of look the other way, which is infuriating. Uh, for the most part, horses, after they have gotten to the point where they can no longer work as a carriage horse, they are euthanized or sent to auction, which, for the most part, when a horse is sent to auction, especially when they get to an age where they can't do anything anymore, they are sent to slaughters to be turned into meat, which, if you've ever seen anything about horse slaughters, it is the most terrifying place for an animal to be. And the way that they kill the horses is inhumane and a lot of the time it takes several of those little metal rods to get into the horse's brain and actually kill them so they're in a lot of pain which is also infuriating might do another video on that but that'll probably just be me raging out at everything uh, which is probably what these ones are gonna be like too
Um, so if you guys don't live in New York City, which I don't, but I have family that lives out in that general area, so I kind of know what the temp, like what the weather is like there, and it fluctuates a lot. In the summertime, it can get anywhere between 90 and 100 degrees plus humidity, and in the wintertime, it can get below zero. Like last winter, we had a giant cold spell. Well, we didn't, but uh, the East Coast got a huge, huge uh, cold spell that froze everything like there were so many snow days that these kids had to like spend um they had to get special equipment for the kids to do work and do homeschooling until the schools were back up and running and the snow was cleared out so it did a lot of damage that allow horses to be worked in specific conditions are or the horses to be worked in those conditions are if it exceeds 90 the horses are not allowed to work and if it drops below 18 degrees, um, these are all degrees Fahrenheit, just by the way, because America only use, we use Fahrenheit because we're special. Um, if it drops below 18 degrees Fahrenheit, they also aren't allowed to work. However, that temperature does not take into account what the temperature of the asphalt is. It'll be, it can get to 45 degrees above what the air temperature is uh, in the summertime. In the wintertime, it just gets a little bit colder but metal is a huge conductor of heat, which also in turn makes it a good um, conductor of cold. So in the hot weather, it goes into the shoe, makes the metal really, really warm, and then burns the horse's hooves. In the winter time, that ice gets set on that cold, on the metal, makes it really cold, and then the horse's little feet start getting cold. And they, in the past two years, there have been 20 reported incidents of horses breaking away and just causing havoc in the streets and you don't have to report accidents to the NYPD like it is not required so that might not be the actual number of accidents that have happened probably isn't either um, also 85% of all horse accidents in the carriage industry are related to horses spooking now why is that because they have these giant blinders on that basically do this to a horse. Horses are animals that need to see in a 360 degree or almost 360 degree vision. They need that sight of vision because they're prey animals and they don't feel comfortable if they don't have their entire vision. The horses have the blinders on which makes it so that they can't see next to them. So if a car goes zooming by or somebody does something that is erratic in any way they're only going to see it for a second and then go, oh my god, something's happening, I need to get out of here. Because that's what horses do. They get scared and then they spook and then stuff happens. Stuff you don't want to. So, in 2007, there was an audit that revealed that many of the horse stabling um, conditions were not up to code. Uh, the fire, like the fire code was not acceptable, like it just wasn't up to the fire standards. Um, the ramps were too steep and uncomfortable for the horses to walk up and down, which there is a video. There's a video of this guy where he's demonstrating how his stable is really nice and how Pete is lying, which I will link in the description as well. And sure, the, uh, the, the stalls were better than some of the other ones, um, but he see, like, he takes the horse down a ramp and it's as steep as normal stairs are. Might be a little less than that. And he says, an old lady in a wheelchair can get up this ramp. Have you seen the ramps that they have in, like, schools and, uh, like, public areas? Those things take forever to get up and down because there's so many turns which make it a nice gradual slope so that it's not hard to get up. Okay, these, these slopes, horses, okay, especially with shoes on, it makes horses' feet really slippery. And going down... A, an incline like that really hard I would probably even slip going down that so I don't know what he's going on about how oh the horses they're just fine really you sure about that um and this if you don't know how the stabling works is usually they're three-story buildings that were once apartments and each horse gets a little tiny tiny stall 
some of them are bigger than others. I will give them that. Some they can actually turn around in, which that particular one I was just talking about, they can turn around in. Um, which we'll get to that video in a moment. Um, but they're very, very poorly designed. Um, there's most live without bedding. There's they're covered in urine and feces. Um, there's close to no ventilation. Uh, the wood floors are rotting to the point where some of them have actually collapsed and injured horses, which is never desired. Also, if you have to get horses out of a burning building, how in the Sam Hell are you going to get them out of a second or third story floor in time? Like, have you ever tried to evacuate horses in an emergency? It's hard even when you're on flat ground, let alone taking them up and down those steep freaking inclines. That is not a good way of stabling horses. They should be on the ground floor. If you're going to have them in a three-story building, storage and stuff should be in the top, and the horses should always be on the bottom. Because that's just stupid to have them up on the third floor, which some of them do. Uh, the horses are supposedly allowed five weeks of vacation in a pasture or farm. Um, but there are no inspectors from the health department. Health? Health. So no one from the health department comes out and sees how the horses are in that area, nor do they ask to. It is not required that they go out and see that. And um, so Dr. Corey with the ASPCA, he's a vet there, says that he has recorded some horses coming back in worse condition than they left in. Which tells me that if they're in a pasture, they're not in a very good location. If they're coming back worse than they were before. And that was the last from that article. That'll be the first article that's up there. So then the next little bit is a, the next couple of them are, yeah, the next two are accidents that have happened. So in June of 2014, I think it was, the article was written on June 10th. So I'm not entirely sure when the actual incident happened. But a horse named Pumpkin broke free of his bridle and was running through the park at his in his normal route. Um, he got out around the Plaza Hotel, which I have no idea where that is. Never been to uh, New York. And a bystander tried to jump into the carriage because there was no one in it. He tried to jump into the carriage and try to stop the horse which inevitably spooked the horse because again he's got these blinders on and he goes holy crap what was that and ends up slamming into the back door of a taxi now the guy who jumped into the cart says that i was only trying to help and make sure that no one else got hurt i've seen so many accidents happen with horses where horses are running rampant and some stupid person has gone I'm going to jump in front of this horse or I'm going to try and stop this horse and then either they get hurt or the horse freaks out more and hurts other people and the art the newscast said that there were other like carriage employees who were waiting for him to come out because they knew exactly where he was going to come out to capture him like they had made a blockade which is what I was doing down here where you couldn't see it, just in the shadow um so if he had just left well enough alone they would have caught the horse and there wouldn't have been an issue. But no, stupid human had to go, hmm, I need to save the day. No, no. If you are not a horse person, do not try and stop a running horse. And even some horse people shouldn't do it. Um, so, then this carriage rider, who remember her name, because she's going to pop up in a little bit too. She says that it is a rare freak accident that a horse breaks away and goes running down a street and her name is Christina Hansen and she's a driver as well so then on April 24th the CBC uh, the, the CBC the CBS news reported a horse getting scared by a bus and fell over onto the pavement with the carriage pinning him down because he flipped over the carriage as well when he fell um, so once they got him pushed back up he was forced to continue working while he was limping. Like, I'm sorry, when you like 
get hurt, do you immediately go back to work if you're like, I can't function properly? No, you take a couple of days off and heal. This horse, uh -uh, none, none for you, no pass for you, which no one will get unless you had my English teacher sophomore year. Uh -huh. So then Christina Hansen says that, oh, she says the horse didn't collapse and he didn't get spooked. Well, then how did he fall over and flip the entire carriage? Hmm? Woman. Uh, like I said, the ban is expected to be done by the end of the year. At least I think I said that already. I could be wrong. Oh, and in the article, it says that Liam Neeson, the actor, who... I like Liam Neeson and all, but he's being a twat. Just saying. Um, he says that it's a class issue that threatens the carriage drivers and stable hands. Really? We're gonna go into you're gonna like people are gonna lose their jobs we can't do that because it's part of our society and our culture no no why is part of our culture something that's putting animals in danger i think i would be more okay with the carriage rides if the horses were a taken care of better and b had their own lane they're in like traffic like regular traffic now i don't even like driving in traffic because there's crazy people that don't pay attention to what they're doing. You think they're gonna pay attention when there's a horse carriage driving around? No. They just go, oh, doop, 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 doop. I'm talking on my phone or putting on makeup or eating food or just not paying attention. And then boom, horse gets hit, possibly has to be put down. Or people in the cart get hurt and then there's a big lawsuit that happens. If they had their own street, they'd be fine. I just, I don't understand why this is something that so many people want to keep. So there's a video, okay, so the next ones are going to be videos. There's a video that Liam Neeson um, narrates on these, the carriage rides. And somebody in the video says that there are no horse abusers in the industry. I'm sorry, every facet of the horse world has at least one horse abuser. And don't even give me that BS that oh no, everyone that works with horses is nice, because no, they're not. When people start exploiting horses for money, there's going to be people that just use them for money. Um, and they also said that it's meant to honor the tradition that built New York. Really? Don't even give me that BS. I don't want to hear it. Um, and it also says... <laughs> Carriage riders, okay, just, just listen to this one for a minute. Carriage riders take this, or carriage, like, the people that drive carriages, take the same risks that joggers do. I'm sorry, what? Are the carriage horses on the sidewalk where it's somewhat safe? No, they're in the street, like I said before. They're driving around with traffic. Are the joggers just running down, like, Fifth Avenue or whatever a... New York Street is. I don't know. I think there's a 35th Avenue. Are they just driving in like the left hand turning lane? Are they just running on that strip of street? No, they're on the sidewalk or in the bike lane. They're in a safe area. Don't give me that BS that they're taking the same risks because they're not. They're taking a bigger risk by being in, in the actual traffic. Um, and then it talks about three story buildings again, which are already established. So in August of 2012, um, a horse collapsed from, collapsed? Collapsed from exhaustion. I can't talk. Um, and the horse was reported to have blood in its nose, as well as damaging a cart and hurting several pedestrians to the point where one of them had to go to the hospital with a neck brace. Again, when that lady said that peanut was a freak accident, no, it was not, ma'am. Um... So, like I was saying before about that guy that said, oh, this is, this is just, you know, this is a nice, easy slope. Okay, this, is the vi this last one is the video, and I promise I'm done after this. So he says that the stall is bigger than some New York bedrooms, as they should be. A 100-pound horse is anywhere between seven and eight times a 150-pound human. So, obviously, they need a bigger bedroom than than I would like my bedroom could probably fit a horse in it it's it wouldn't be the biggest stall but it would be to the point where the horse could actually move around so oh and also in the video he says 
this is high quality hay. It looked really freaking moldy to me. I don't know if that was just the quality of the camera and the fact that there were really dim lights, but it looked super moldy. It looked dried out and moldy as hell. If you want to have a little bit of a discussion in the description, please keep it to a discussion. I would rather have my comment section be discussion based instead of argument based because that's just annoying for everyone involved. Um, but yeah, like I said, I will be doing another one of these news videos and if you guys like them or have any other news like topics that I, I don't know about, let me know and I will possibly make a video on them. Um, so yeah, let me know also in the description or in the comment section. If you guys have your own opinions on the New York carriage rides, let me know in the description or uh, let me know in the comment section. Oh, can't think right now. Let me know in the comment section what you think of the um, carriage rides and we'll have a discussion about it. That'll be fun. Uh, but anyhow guys, we're gonna end it there, uh, and I'm gonna go have a lie down because I am super pissed right now.